So what we're going to try and do here is have a look at how you should answer a 20 mark question. Uh, this is the example we're going to use. And the first thing you should do is think to yourself, right, what are going to be what are the points that are going to be relevant in this question? So you can look at things like information, propaganda, personal opinions, that kind of thing you're going to be including in your answer. But then what you want to do is you want to have a look at the sources and annotate them and analyse them, which means that you need to look at both the uh, provenance of the source, which of course is here at the top of the source, and the content. Now, looking at these, the first thing you want to do is look at any words that are obviously important. Um, an examiner is not going to put a word in if there isn't a good reason for it. And in this case, if you look at the source, the word former is quite clear. So what does it mean? Well, perhaps in this situation it says it's Lord Lansdowne, a former minister in Asquith's wartime government. Well, why was he a former minister? Is it because he is a disgruntled individual? Um, or are we using the word former because it means that he's free to comment on uh, government information now he's no longer part of the uh, wartime cabinet? What's also important that it does point out that he was a member of the uh, wartime government, which means that he will have had access to information that wasn't necessarily available to ordinary people. Now that is going to be clearly very useful and that's just simply from two points in the first line of the provenance. Here's an interesting point. What it does say is that uh, the initial newspaper uh, that it was given to didn't print it. Second newspaper did. Now there's got to be some question as to why that might be the case. Um, so of course, initially, um, maybe the, this shows the relationship between the Ministry of Information uh, and the newspapers, shows that there's cooperation between them, but the, this had broken down by the time the letter was put out. What could have made that uh, relationship between the, the military, the government, and uh, the press broken down? Well, could it be something to do with the date? Here we go. And that 29th of November 1917, well, of course, that's, uh, you know, at the back end of 1917. And, of course, that means that it's at the end of the Third Battle of Ypres. Passchendaele was a really good example of where Haig got it wrong. And, uh, as a result, uh, could it be that this minister, the newspapers had finally lost their patience with the cooperation that they were offering uh, and it could also suggest that there was a general change in public opinion as a result. Let's have a quick look at uh, source 2. The first thing you want to look at is right, who wrote this source and in this source it was written by Vera Britton. Now that's not the sort of name that you'll, you know, that will jump out at you so that's not too much to worry about, but what we do realise, having had a read through the provenance, is that she was a civilian. We'll again look at the date. The date here is the 24th of January 1916. Really important. Not only is this the middle of the war, what's very important here is it's pre-Somme. It's before the Battle of the Somme took place. And of course the Battle of the Somme was, in a lot of cases, a watershed moment for people's understanding of the type of battle that was being fought. And then what's also very interesting is it points out that she later joined the Anglican Pacifist Fellowship, which of course was an anti-war body. Um, and so what we're seeing here is a civilian whose attitude changed. Before the Somme, she was clearly you know, on the side of the war to a degree. After the war, her, after the Somme, sorry, her opinions have changed. So what we're starting to see here is, if we think back to the question, is we're looking at the idea of how the opinions changed. Then we just look at the content for some, some furthering of that idea. She says that she is against the idea of war in principle, but actually in some cases war is justifiable. There are worse things than the war itself. So she's sort of separating the First World War from war in general by saying, you know what, the war is important because it's against something worse. Now if you think about the term the war to end all wars, Perhaps what we're seeing here is a success of the government's propaganda. 
could it be that you know she's been sold the idea that this war is one that has to be fought, regretfully being fought by the British, um, and, but therefore you, you should be supporting it. So this could be uh, a big success on the part of the government. And finally, just looking at source three, this is a really interesting one. It says here it's an anonymous letter. This makes it quite difficult to pinpoint who has written it. It's made to look like it was written by a civilian mother. But then the questions have got to be asked, who would have written this? Yes, they say that it's uh, the letter from uh, a military mother, but we're gonna have a little look into whether that's necessarily the case. First thing that we look at yet again is the date, and this is after the start of the Somme. This is happening in August 1916. Of course, the first uh, week of the Somme was a pre pretty severe for British soldiers, and so we've got an idea by this time of what the Somme's like. Also, this letter has been written as a reply to a letter from a common soldier. So basically, what we're saying is. An ordinary soldier has clearly written into the newspaper and criticised the war. What it would appear to be the case is that it must have happened before August 1916, which most likely means it happened early August or late July 1916. That means this soldier has a personal view on potentially the Battle of the Somme. And by the sort of gist of what this source says, it suggests that it may have been a negative one because the reply from the anonymous mother is quite scathing of it, but positive about the war and, uh, uh, as a whole. So that's what we've got. We've effectively got two viewpoints here that in, the, in the one source. The anonymous mother and the anonymous soldier. And of course the soldier's being negative about the war, though we're not actually seeing this. The mother is being um, uh, quite positive about the war in, in certain aspects. But then you've got to say, well, why would a, an anonymous mother write this? And then you start looking at the way that it's written. It's written very aggressively, pathetically suggesting that the common that the common soldier is a pathetic character. Um, we women, in a kind of collective view, um, is this the view of all women, or maybe this is the view that somebody wants people to believe that all women have? And of course, they use really evocative language. Um, it's aggressively pro-war, uh, and and the the idea of using the human animation of our sons, um, almost dehumanizing the the sons themselves and it's the, the mothers that are feeling the pain not the not the sons it's a very cleverly written letter which may suggest that this was actually the ministry of information themselves you can't say that for definite but in a good answer you could imply that with evidence by saying all of these things about the way that it's been written about the, the motivation behind it and you could imply that it could be the ministry of information and that would strengthen your answer because what you're doing is you're analyzing the source and saying well you know what it says this but also i pretty I, you know I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that's true it could mean this but what this is saying is the british women were behind the soldiers and just just to sort of emphasize this in the annotation here um it's a response, all right? So you can imply what had been said in the original letter. Certainly it says it in the provenance and certainly it hints it in the source itself. So what you've got here are two sides. You've got the anti-war statement by the soldier. You've got the pro statement by the mother. So this is, this is something you're gonna have to bring up in your answer. And also it strengthens it and it gives you more scope for cross-referring. It's anonymous, which may make it possible that it could have been written by the Ministry of Information in order to counterbalance what had been written by the common soldier. Perhaps giving you the opinion of the one person who you'd have more sympathy for than the soldier himself, which is his mother. Um, it's a brilliant bit of propaganda if it is. And as I say, you can't definitely say that's the case, but what you can do is imply it. And if you imply that with your evidence for your, re your reasoning for that idea, uh, it will strengthen your answer and give it uh, a better depth, bit of depth than just simply saying this source is a letter. So then once you've done that, then you've got to start actually creating your plan from this analysis.
The key thing here is to make sure that this plan is very short and just bullet points because all you're going to do with it here is use it as a reference as you're writing so you don't forget to include anything. And so what you want to do is make sure you just make a bullet point list of all the points that you're going to make. Realistically, in the time you have for an A question, three or four points is all you're going to be able to really fully develop. Five points is probably stretching a little bit and maybe you know pushing it past time and also are there going to be five points to get out of this? Um, so in this case, what you've got to look at is, well, the key thing, if you go back to the question, this is going to have to have some reference to the changing view over time. It's one of the key things a question's asking. It's very obvious it's asking you that. Of course, you've got three sources from three separate points in the wall. So again, you know, the, the clues are all there for you to find it within the question. The other thing you're going to have to look at is access to, uh, uh, to information. So you can make some reference uh, to Dora. Um, it's not looking for your own knowledge, but you know the own knowledge is implied by the way that you answer the question. Also, it's looking for the views of individuals, not like an individual person, but individual groups of people. For example, the government, civilians, and soldiers. What were their opinions, and how did their opinions change? Now, the really good thing is here you've got different views from civilians. You've got a pro-war and an anti-war civilian here, uh, so you've got both there to, to look at. And the next step, of course, is to use your bullet points and to bring your evidence in from your sources and start writing. The key thing is to make sure you have a plan, that you've analysed your sources, that you include all, all of the sources. And the real key to success in a 20 mark question is do not, under any circumstances, answer it source by source. By doing that, you make it really difficult to do the key skill that is required to get level three and above, and that is to make sure that you're cross-referring your sources. If you say source A says this, source B says this, source C says this, you're not really giving yourself the scope to develop that any further. What you want to do, this point is says this, source A says this on this point, source B says this on this point, they disagree, they agree, whatever it is, but don't do it source by source because it just won't work.